What's going on guys? My name is BJ and this is Praska Boys Garage. Now today I am starting part four of the build series of our Teo Teo ATA 110. And as you know, I just got back from powder coating and I so badly just want to put this thing into a rolling chassis and get started with the, the whole rebuilding process. But we have to take a pause and address this motor. Now there's so many glaringly obvious things that are wrong with this motor. That's why I want to do it now. The last thing I want to do is get to the end of this process where I'm ready to put the motor in and actually take it for a test ride and find out that I've got to either order a whole bunch more parts or have so much more time invested in getting it ready. So I did order a few things for the motor, but I have yet to look at it. Uh, I haven't even so much as turned it over or checked the oil. So you guys are going to be along the ride for the very first time with me checking this thing out. All right, so let's start with the glaringly obvious things that I see wrong with this motor. And these are things you guys can look for too when picking up these ATVs. Now, for starters, the carburetor, not there. Also, spark plug has been taken out. Normally, that's not a huge deal, but because we had no plastics covering the top, and I know for a fact it's been sitting outside for years now, that means water has just been draining in, bugs, dirt, debris. Ultimately, that's why I made the decision I'm going to be rebuilding this top end no matter what. So I'm not so concerned about that part of it but i am concerned about any water that would have dripped down into this case you can see all the oil that has overflowed and accumulated on the outside and that is super concerning now there is some hope maybe the last owner overfilled it with oil and they rode it and it just kind of seeped out and kind of got all over the place or maybe they did some service work and tilted it on its side and oil came out i don't know but that's probably not logically the correct answer. It's most likely going to be water, but we're going to find out in just a second. Now, I do know the starter is most likely bad. I can't guarantee it, but we can say that because there was a fire, I already bought a new one anyway. We're just going to go ahead and replace that before we get started. So ultimately, I'm going to get you guys set up in the stand and start cracking into this thing. All right, well, the very first thing I think we need to do is drain the oil and investigate and see what we've got. Okay, that's a good sign. I, uh, I don't see any oil on the initial look, and it's not overfilled. I mean, maybe a little bit heavy, but definitely doesn't look like it's covered in water. So let's go ahead and drain it out. All right, so we'll let this drain all out. We'll come back in just a minute. All right, guys, so as it's draining, I know you can't smell it like I can, but it actually smells like bad gas. So I'm assuming maybe some gas got down there, but there's not any water, which is actually a really, really good sign. We'd rather have gas than the water itself, so I, I think I'm going to be okay. Um, I'm going to continue to let this drain out of the motor. While it does that, I'm going to get a couple things set up, and then we'll start breaking into some more. All right, what do you guys want to do next? Pop this side off and take a look inside or starter. Let's pop this off and take a look and clean it out uh, because I don't want to start turning the motor over until there's motor ba oil back in it. And once motor oil is back in it, I can't take this cover off. So let's go ahead and pop this off. A lot of sludge build up on the bottom. Oh yeah. Sludge, sludge, sludge. And then it's not, it's not terrible. I mean the gasket looks good, but just, ugh. look at all that. Ugh. All right. All right, guys, well, I'm very happy with this so far because I don't find anything that would lead me to believe that the case actually filled up with water. There's no rust. There's no corrosion. There's no deterioration. The bottom end actually looks pretty good. So I think we've got a pretty good bottom end set up on our hands. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take that cover. We're going to throw it back on. I'm going to run over to the pressure washer and pressure wash the whole thing off. When we bring it back, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with diesel fuel. Yes, I said diesel fuel. We're filling the case up with diesel because diesel will actually break down any of that oil remnants that's still left over. We'll ultimately flush that out and then we'll start moving on to some other things. All 
All right, now that it's pressure washed off, we're gonna go ahead and pop this side cover off one more time. I wanna go ahead and replace that gasket before actually adding any diesel. Oh, hey man, what's that you say? Oh, uh, hey dude, I didn't know you were watching. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the gasket before you ever put any diesel in, ever. Yep. That's interesting. How do you explain this? So that diesel is just leaking all over the place. Great, great, great. Wow. Bro, it's pretty obvious. So here's what you did. You ordered a gasket kit off Amazon Prime, you washed your clothes, you come back two days later, and now you want to act as if you didn't dump diesel fuel everywhere? Okay, okay, okay. I, we get it. <laughs> I will now replace the gasket. I don't know if you guys can pick that up on camera or not. It's turning, but it's crusty. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? Look at all that crap. Even after we cleaned it out and sprayed it out, all that's still getting flushed out of this motor. All right, I'm gonna flush it with some oil before it's final oil change. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some oil in, we're gonna mix it all around, we're gonna dump it out, and then we're gonna start attacking this top end. All right, so it's been a couple days since I put that oil in, and I just wanna show you underneath it we got no leaks whatsoever so i'm happy with that now before we go ahead and actually take off this top end let's check to see what compression we actually have all right so like i've done in all my other videos i'm going to take a 12 volt battery we're going to hook up power from the starter directly to the power side of the battery and now by taking a ground wire when we strike the new starter we put on we should get it to turn over which we do all right, let's hook up the compression check and just see what we come up with. I'm not thinking it's going to be very good. <laughs> it's zero. Ab absolutely nothing whatsoever. Let's, uh, let's grab a tester and see what's leaking. All right, guys, so now we're going to perform a leak down test. We don't necessarily have to. Uh, but I'm just kind of curious, even though we're replacing the whole top end, it's nice to know where it's failed. Now, if I had to guess, this ATV didn't stop for a mechanical issue. It, it got lit on fire for an electrical issue. So I'm thinking the motor is probably good, uh, but because it's been sitting for so long, I'm going to guess a valve might be stuck open. That's why we have absolutely zero compression. But let's just see. All right, right off the bat, we've got a pretty significant leak. There's only really three spots air can go. Out the exhaust port, out the intake port, or past the rings down to the case where we would hear it coming out of the bottom end. 
It's coming from the intake. My guess is we got a stuck valve, so let's go ahead, we'll drain the oil out and investigate. All right, well, let's take a closer look at the actual head. As you can see, just like we had suspected, this intake valve is stuck open just the slightest bit, which was allowing absolutely no compression to build up whatsoever. Also, I smelled gas, like I said earlier, and you can see the remnants of that gas. I'm assuming that piston was actually in there at top dead center and allowed that build up and eventually some of it seeped into that back case. So ultimately, I'm glad we are doing the rebuild. We are gonna be putting brand new valves, brand new gaskets up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip the rest of this off before we get started on that. That completes the removal of the top end. Let's go ahead and start getting this thing rebuilt. It's actually bent. Fought me the whole way. Can you guys see this? She's way bent. You see it just kind of curves going that way. All right, guys, well, off camera, I spent a couple hours just getting everything kind of cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and speed you up on a time lapse here. Ultimately, I'm gonna be putting this whole top end back together before putting it back on the motor. All right, we got the top end all assembled with a very healthy coating of engine assembly lube. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, throw it back on the motor before we set these valves to their final spec. All right, guys, this thing is coming together really, really smoothly. All I've got left to do is set these valves and get these covers on, and then we'll go ahead and recheck compression. All right, I got it all set up. We're gonna go ahead and recheck for compression. Let's uh, go ahead and turn the start over, make sure it sounds good. <laughs> sounds healthy. Let's do the thumb trick. Let's go ahead and put a thumb on, see what blows your thumb off. <laughs> We're gonna have compression. <laughs> All right, let's check, see what it is. All right, guys, what do you think the prediction is? I'm gonna say 140. Ready? about 155 
I'm gonna take that. Let's go ahead and get the wiring kit set up and the carburetor on and see if we can't actually run this thing. All right, so I've got all the wiring laid out and hooked up on the table. We're gonna double check, make sure all the wiring looks good and everything functions there and also turns the motor over. So I unplugged the spark plug, uh, everything's live. So as soon as we turn the key on, we're gonna hold the brake together. Let's see what happens. That is what we want to hear. Okay, let's grab a, another spark plug. And let's see if we've got spark. All right, well, it doesn't show up on camera, but we do have spark. So we're going to go ahead, hook the coil back up. Let's dribble a little bit of fuel down, see if it'll pop off. All right, we've got some fuel. We'll dribble that down. Go ahead and see what happens. That's what we like to hear. Woo! All right. <laughs> Uh, maybe put the carburetor on now and see if we can't get it to idle for a little bit. All right, we've got it filled up with gas. Let's see if it'll run on its own. All right, guys, well, that was awesome. So the next thing I'm actually gonna do is break the motor in. I'm gonna run it through some heat cycles where I let it idle for a long period of time, high rev it, idle, high rev it, idle. Uh, I am gonna do that off camera because it is, well, it's kind of boring. So <laughs> what we're gonna do next for you guys though, once that's done, is start getting this motor completely stripped and ready for paint. All right, guys, well, we are on the final step of this motor rebuild, and that is painting. Now, as far as getting it stripped is concerned, I wouldn't say it's 100% perfect, but we're pretty dang close, good enough for what I'm trying to accomplish. Now, what I'm going to do is take some wax and grease remover, wash off the entire motor, and we're going to get it set up for the high temp primer. Step number two. All right, that primer has been sitting for about 15 minutes now. I'm gonna go ahead and put on our first coat of black. Coat number two. Now that the painting's done, I brought the motor back inside. I do wanna finish it up 100%, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that starter and the car we're gonna throw it back on. That way we can button this thing up and call it done. All right, guys, well, here is the final product, and I have to say it looks absolutely amazing. I could not be happier with the result. It was a labor of love. A lot of work went into making it look like this, but hey, the results speak for itself. Now, the only thing we've got left to do is throw it into this ATV and see the final product. So with that being said, I'm going to put an end to part number four of this build series. And if you're still watching the video, thank you so much for sticking around. If you have not done so already, throw that thumbs up for me. And if you're not subscribed and you want to be notified when part number five comes out, do yourself and myself a favor. Icon is going to be right here at the end of this video. Click on it. That way I can guarantee I will see you on the next one. Always do it on my own. So I got to get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's. I just want to keep moving. Keep my head up when I act. Head up, that's a fact. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets Live with every breath, see my message start to spread And I had so many dreams, then you hit your teens I think really what it seems, try to find out what it means Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to
to love what I'm doing.